our lab. And you might be wondering, why do I have three post-it notes? You might not know if it's exactly three, but it's actually three. So that's because we're going to be doing a lab. So what I'm going to do is first, I am going to stand like this, just in front of the wall, and extend my hand up until I can't anymore. Then I'll put a post-it note where my hand is. That's measurement number uno. And then we have measurement number dos, which is going to be me crouching and then extending my hand up as far as I can. And that is as far as I can go. And we have step number one right over there. Then we have step number two right over there. Finally, step number three right over there. All right, so let's measure my weight here. And because of my added clothes, it's 88.4. to 72 centimeters above there. We had our standing measurement. And this was 179 centimeters off of the ground. Then we had our crouching measurement. Crouching, this was number two and it was 123 centimeters off the ground. And finally, we have our jumping measurement, which was measurement number three, and it was 195 centimeters off the ground. All right, so what we, do, we really don't care about what, how far these were off of the ground. What we do care about is the differences between crouching and standing and standing and jumping. So what is the difference between standing and crouching? Well, we have 179 minus 123 is equal to 56 or yeah, 56 centimeters, but converted to meters, that's 0.56 meters. All right, well, what about here? We have 195 minus 179 is 16 centimeters or 0.16 meters. All right, so that's our diagram, all good and done. So how will we approach this problem? Well, we have four problems. Number one, what is the initial velocity that we have just before our feet leave the ground? Number two, what is our initial acceleration just before our feet leave the ground? Number three, what is the net force as we leave the ground? That's a lot of as we leave the ground. And four, what is our pushing force that gets us off the ground? One of the things to note is that to get off the ground here, your acceleration, your initial acceleration must be greater than G. But after jumping, your acceleration is equal to G. In other words, you're at free fall in the different color. So our initial velocity here is zero. Our velocity here at later. And here, it's equal to zero again. The F squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. Now, here we're finding VI over here, as I just said. So that means that A is equal to G at this point. So VF is equal to zero because we're going in this interval. So how do I say this? Problem one covers this interval while problem two covers this interval. And so do problem three and problem four. So here acceleration is equal to G and Vf is zero because this is our maximum height. This is zero equals Vi squared, so we're still trying to find that, plus two G, and D is this, which is 0.16 meters. So Vi squared equals minus two GD. Now this might look worrying because, of course, we have a square and then a negative on the other side, but since G is negative, then we have minus 2 times minus 10 
times d is 0.16. So we have vi squared is equal to 20 times 0.16, which is 3.2. So vi, taking the square root, is 1.79 meters per second. We're trying to find now the acceleration. And remember, as I just said, number two covers this interval. So that means Vf is going to be what we thought Vi was here, and then Vi is equal to zero. So now we have the same equation, Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2ad. And remember how I said this is going to get plugged into Vi? Well, that's actually pretty handy. Considering this is just the square root of 3.2, and we have a square here. So, we have the square root of 3.2 squared is equal to vi is 0. So, 0 squared plus 2. We don't know a, that's what we're trying to solve for. And d is this distance. And that's 0.56. So, we know that 3.2 is equal to 2 times 0.56 is 1.12a. So that means A is equal to approximately, it's time to put a second cap onto my marker. A is equal to 2.86, or rather 87 meters per second squared. What we're going to do is, for number three, we're trying to find the net force. But the net force is actually really easy. The net force is equal to ma. And if I didn't tell you before, oh yeah, I did. I'm 88 pounds right now. So that equates to about 39.9 kilograms. So we have sigma f is equal to 39.9. So 40 times 2.87 together gives us 114. Okay. Multiplying that all together gives us 115 newtons. Now we're going to be doing the free body diagram in three situations. First, when the body is at rest. Two, when the body is about to jump. And three, when it is in midair. So, one, where it is at rest. We have Fg, but also Fn. According to Newton's first law, an object will, uh, that is at rest will only move if an unbalanced force acts on it. And since Fn and Fg are balanced forces, they are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction, then the object is at rest, or in this case, the person. About to jump means we are exerting that F plus on the grid is basically the sum of Fn and F plus. And then we have Fg. And then midair, there was no contact force, and our F plus is we've exerted on the ground. The only force acting on us right now is Fg, midair. So this is an example of Newton's first law. But because of Fn, it's also an example of Newton's third law. Here, F plus being exerted on the ground and the ground exerting the same magnitude back is Newton's third law. And here, this, oh yeah, and this also exhibits Newton's second law as well. So we're talking about this situation in problem number five where we're trying to find F plus. So, here we have sigma F is equal to F plus minus Fg. So, we already found sigma F, and we know that it is 115 newtons. It's equal to F plus minus Fg is also mass times the gravitational constant. So we have 115 plus Mg is F plus. 
So f plus is, let's plug in the values, we're using 10 on this worksheet. So we have 10 times the mass is 40 to give us 400 is f plus. So f plus is 515 f plus and minus fg, let's see what that gives us. f plus is 515, mg is 40 times 10 is 400, so it gives us 115 newtons. So that's it. Thank you everybody for watching.